Lizanne, I'll start with you. Are happy times here again? Um, I, I think it's too soon to tell. Looking at a, a one-week uh, rally after seven weeks of, of pretty significant carnage is is, is more indicative of a counter trend move. Uh, the types of rallies you tend to see in bear markets, I think it's premature to look at this either from a technical or breadth perspective and suggest that it marks the, the beginning of a new cyclical uh, uptrend. Uh, this is just natural to see this kind of pressure. I think, you know, somewhat ironically, it was the weaker economic data to a large degree that changed the perspective or the narrative as it relates to Fed policy to maybe they have some flexibility to pause after the next couple of rate hikes. But uh, I, I think it's also premature to make that assessment. So, Ben, I know that you're a longer term investor. You don't just look week to week. But did we learn anything about that issue, about whether it's a soft landing or a hard landing from what we saw this week? I don't think we learned anything that's that determinative. Uh, we've seen some evidence that there are parts of the economy that are softening. I mean, it's most clear in the housing market, and that's the place most heavily impacted by what goes on in rates. So, uh, you know, that shouldn't have been a surprise. I'd say from the consumer perspective, the consumer still seems to be pretty strong. Um, we haven't seen strong evidence of, of the consumer pulling back. So I don't think we've seen anything that should really cause people to have said, ah, OK, great. Uh, we're going to have a soft landing. We're not going to have recession. We're not going to have uh, continued inflation problems. But as Lizanne was saying, man, it's been a really long run of the market losing week after week. Uh, and markets almost never move for long periods of time just in one direction. There's always two-way vol volatility. Lizanne, I wonder uh, what it told us, if anything, about the possibility of a recession. I mean, obviously, the Fed, in part, wants things to slow down. They're not going to get their arms around inflation without some slowdown someplace. And we certainly are seeing some weaker numbers in things like housing, as you mentioned. So uh, clearly, the Fed doesn't um, want to engineer or drive us into a recession, but they do concede it may be the the price in order to narrow the gap between demand and supply. And monetary policy can sometimes be a fairly blunt instrument. And really, all they can control right now is the demand side. I think the path to a soft landing would be the supply side easing up, not just supply chain disruptions, but also the supply of labor. And that doesn't appear to be imminent, but I, I think that's probably the primary path to a soft landing. Otherwise, I think the conditions in place right now, the kind of early deterioration that we're seeing have the needle pointing a little bit more toward recession than soft landing. The last 13 rate hike cycles, you've had thir uh, 10 recessions and three soft landings. So simple history says that it's more likely this time. And with a 40-year high in inflation and the Fed simultaneously trying to shrink a $9 trillion balance sheet, it's hard to suggest that that points the needle more towards soft landing. But there is a path in that direction. Ben, I'm not going to ask you necessarily to make a prediction on a recession or even when it might happen, but it must be one thing you take into account as you decide your investment uh, issues uh, that are in front of you. Well, how do you take into account a possible recession right now? You know, there's two things we tend to focus on. One of them we focus on almost all the time. Are there conditions that would make a recession, if we get one, a particularly dangerous one? We look for uh, things going on in the financial markets, evidence of excessive leverage, either on the corporate side, the household side, the financial uh, system side, uh, or an economy that's just been growing in a way that just looks really unhealthy. We don't see any evidence for that now. So even if we get a recession now, I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. And most recessions aren't. They come and they go. Inflation goes up. Uh, I mean, excuse me, unemployment goes up. It's you know, bad for people who lose their jobs, but you come back in a couple of years, it's like, oh yeah, right, there was a recession. I'd forgotten about that. The thing that I think makes it matter more this time is right now, we obviously have more of an inflation problem in the US than we have had in 40 years. And one of the clear ways that that might go away is if we got a recession. Um, so ordinarily, we don't care that much is it going to be a soft landing? Is it going to be a recession? Because either way, it's going to disappear within a couple of years. This time around, I do think the question of whether inflation becomes entrenched and becomes very difficult to get rid of is 
incredibly impactful one, not just for the bond market, but for the stock market as well. Um, and so the evidence of the U.S. heading into recession earlier than expected um, matters more than I'd say a recession normally does. Yeah, and David, I, I would agree with, with Ben. I think this is, I, I don't want to be um, so cavalier as to say garden variety recession, but not the kind of crisis-driven recession, not even as we see housing rolling over. This is not a systemic crisis is going to bring down the global financial system along with the then how popping of the housing bubble. So it's a more natural end to a business cycle, which even if it's not imminent, will happen at some point. And I, I think the the Fed gets that and, and they don't want to do anything artificial to try to prevent the natural force of a business cycle, especially if inflation doesn't become contained uh, in the near term. Uh, ben, as Lizanne says, if the supply situation straightens itself out, we're in pretty good shape because it'll take care of inflation. But if that doesn't happen, where are we? And particularly, people are talking about a couple of supply shocks right now, certainly energy, given what's going on with Russia. But it, actually, the energy prices were up even before the, the sanctions against Russia. And, of course, food. We're really concerned now about getting grain and other food out of Ukraine. Yeah, I think, I mean, the food situation is a really important one for the world. Um, and if you think about kind of the poorer countries in the world where food is a big part of the consumption basket, that price rise is a extraordinary social problem. The nice thing about the US and the rest of the developed world is higher food prices for the vast majority of people are a nuisance and a pain, but they're not a life and death problem. Um, uh, with energy and, and the commodity price increases, it has been interesting, right? This is a supply shock. We've seen uh, prices go up. That often leads to problems in the economy. But the other thing it often does is lead to excessive investment in the commodity space itself and kind of creates the seeds of destruction in terms of falling prices. And there's where it's really been interesting this time around. We have not seen the burst of investment either on the energy side of things or, you know, because industrial metals prices have moved up hugely. We haven't seen the huge increase in investment there. Um, and that's good if you're going to be buying those companies, because ordinarily the dangerous thing about buying those companies when prices are high is because they make bad decisions and, and uh, destroy their return on capital but not necessarily so good as we look forward for the global economy because we're not seeing the obvious places where more mm -hmm. copper, more oil, more natural gas, more iron, more lithium is really gonna come from uh, and, and release that cost pressure coming from uh, the supply side there. Uh, Lizanne, Ben Rins is a really interesting point. Even beyond commodities, what are we seeing in capital investment? Because we like to see capital investment to have productivity go up. So short term, I, I think there's a, a risk that it continues to weaken here. If you look at capital spending intentions, if you look at the CEO uh, survey of confidence, it, it suggests that near term, there's going to be a constraint. However, if you want to find a, a bright spot, medium to longer term in the U.S. economy, um, I, I think the, the capital investment side is going to be very strong. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see if the consumer as a driver of GDP starts to move down slightly from its current 70% weight. And what picks up some of that uh, decline is uh, business investment, capital investment, and in conjunction with government investment. And I think that's a, that's a healthy backdrop for an economy. And uh, it may not be the near-term story, but I think it's a much more powerful medium to longer-term story.